Okay, we're back, and we're going to talk about genetic heterogeneity, and we're talking about the allelic type and the locus type of heterogeneity. So first, um, in talking about uh, genetic heterogeneity, we should know that it includes a number of phenot phenotypes that are similar but are actually determined by different genotypes. And this may be due to allelic heterogeneity, locus heterogeneity, or both. So first let's talk about allelic uh, heterogeneity. And this is when different mutations occur at the same locus. So we're talking about allele, we're talking about one of the pairs. So, And here we're saying that for allelic heterogeneity, um, different mutations happen at the same area, same locus, same part of the chromosome. And uh, But for locus heterogeneity, they sound very similar, the mutations are actually different loci. And the recognition of genetic heterogeneity is an important aspect of clinical diagnosis and genetic, and genetic counseling. And this is what we're talking about here. We're, we're becoming mini uh, geneticists and we're trying to figure out how we can uh, counsel patients um, uh, using a basic pedigree chart uh, looking at their family history and trying to offer some advice. So, trying to learn as, I, as much as I can here. So, let's just think about this. The important thing to remember here is that a single phenotype or genetic disorder may be caused by an allele or non-allele uh, mutations. But uh, let's move on and talk a bit more about locus heterogeneity. A pedigree analysis may be sufficient to demonstrate locus uh, heterogeneity. And remember that locus heterogeneity is where different mutations happen at the same area or the same area of that chromosome. And so let's talk about one example. One example would be retinitis pigmentosa. This is an example of lotus, uh, locus heterogeneity. So a common cause uh, of visual impairment due to photoreceptor degeneration associated with abnormal pigment dis distribution in the retina. And this is unknown to occur uh, for autosomal uh, dominant, autosomal recessive, and, and X-linked forms. And another example is endlos danlos syndrome. And this is the typical elastic skin syndrome where skin and other connective tissues may be excessively elastic or fragile. And this is because of a defect in the collagen structure. And again, this may be autosomal uh, dominant, autosomal recessive, or X-linked. And at least 10 different loci are involved. So remember that locus heterogeneity, again, uh, means mutations at different loci. So two examples of locus heterogeneity there, retinitis pigmentosa and endlos danlos syndrome. So moving on, let's talk about allelic heterogeneity. And so remember that allelic heterogeneity means different mutations occurring at the same locus. And this is an important cause of clinical variation. Sometimes there are different mutations at the same locus. And this is clinically indistingu indistinguishable or uh, closely similar disorder. So in other cases, for example, different mutant alleles at the same locus lead to very different clinical presentations. But here we're talking about allelic heterogeneity, different, different mutations at the same locus. So let's talk about uh, an example. And the example here we're talking about is the RET gene, RAT gene, which encodes for the receptor tyrosine kinase. Very important, needed, of course. And some mutations cause dominantly inherited failure of the development of uh, colonic ganglia, which would then lead to defective colonic motility and a severe chronic uh, constipation. And this is known as um, Hirsch, um, Hirschsprung disease. Hirschsprung disease. And another mutation, in, other mutations in the same gene, for example, 
uh, would lead to a dominantly inherited cancer of the thyroid and adrenal gland, which is known as multiple endocrine neoplasia. And a third group of RET mutations uh, would lead to both um, Hirschsprung disease and multiple endocrine neoplasia in the same individual. So again, we're talking about allelic heterogeneity, different mutations occurring at the same uh, locus. And in fact, unless they have uh, consanguineous parents, meaning inbreeding, most people with autosomal recessive orders are more likely to have compound rather than truly homozygous genotypes, although we study uh, the basic uh, Punnett squares uh, to show you know, quite a, a simple uh, relationship, but in fact they're, it's said that uh, they're likely to have compound rather than truly hom uh, homozygous genotypes. So remember um, that because the different allelic combinations may have somewhat different clinical consequences, one must be aware of the allelic heterogeneity as one possible explanation for the variability among patients considered to have some disease. So it's expected now, with all this information, we're going to be able to look at people and start to diagnose them. I don't think I'm at that point yet, but I think I'm learning a lot here. But one thing we should remember here is the takeaway from this slide is that for people with uh, autosomal recessive diseases, they usually have compound uh, compound uh, genotypes. So uh, this is a very important part of this. So we have looked at genetic heterogeneity and two types, the locus heterogeneity and allelic heterogeneity. So again, uh, the allelic heterogeneity is different mutations on the same locus, and the uh, locus heterogeneity is mutations at different loci.